Hello and welcome back to Handheld Computing. Today we're having a change of tact and we're going to have a look back at the Palm 5. You'll find the review for it just up here. At this time we're going to have a look at getting the most out of it using a couple of bits of software to expand the storage and to overclock the CPU. I'll warn you now, overclocking comes with inherent risks and I take no responsibility for loss of hardware or software. That said, let's have a look. So here we are with my Palm 5. As you'll recall in the original review, I said not to bother playing Game Boy games on it. However, that's exactly what we're going to try and do today. So first of all, let's turn it on, have a look at the programs I've got installed. So you'll see I've got a benchmark tool, Phonics, which is the Game Boy emulator, and Xmaster, which is a hack program. So we're gonna just run a benchmark initially so we can see how well things run. So this compares it to a Palm 3, and we're at 72% the speed of a Palm 3. Interestingly, 72% um, is lower than it registers for the Palm 5. Oh well, there we are. But that's where we're up to. So next up, let's have a look at what it's like to try and play a Game Boy game. So we'll load Phonics. I've put a save state in, essentially because it saves us going through the intro sequence. And so here's this save state. So this is it. You can see there's a little bit of lag. And if we start moving around, you'll see there's massive amount of lag. So this is utterly unplayable, really. And it's like trying to play everything in slow motion. So what we're going to do, let's come out of this. So we're going to go into Hackmaster, and we're going to go into Afterburner, and we're going to configure it. I would recommend having a look through the tips, because there's an awful lot more you can do with this than just altering the CPU speed. You can also alter this, the um, screen speed and the tick speed and all sorts of other bits and bobs, which can ultimately create a much faster device. For now, we're going to stick with something pretty basic. So we're just going to go to speeds. So I've already been in and selected these, so I'm just going to adjust the benchmark speed to the maximum. Oh, or I would if I could select it. Let's just go down so we can go up to 37 megahertz, which is a massive jump from 16, which is the native speed of this device. Um, and then we're going to do the same with the Phonics emulator. So it's currently 35. We'll put it to 37. Hopefully it won't be too glitchy. Hit OK, so that's set, and then tick the box, and back to our main screen. So we'll run that benchmark again, and see what we get this time. Boom, 130% of a Palm 3C. So that's quite a massive improvement, considering we were at 72 before, so we've almost doubled the speed. So let's go back into our Game Boy emulator. There's our save state, here we are again. Immediately you can see everything looks a lot smoother, it's, it's running much better. And if we start to move, you'll see, although there's a little bit of lag, I'm not gonna say it's perfect, but I would say this is now a playable uh, emulation. So there we have it, a little bit of overclocking and you've got a perfectly good Game Boy emulation. Obviously you're limited by the internal memory or are you? So next up, we're gonna look at this application, Jack Flash. So there's two here, Jack Flash and Jack Safe. Jack Safe allows you to create um, a section within the flash memory that will allow you to retrieve items you've saved in the flash already. And Jack Flash allows you to move things backwards and forwards to the flash. Let's launch Jack Flash and take a look. So here we are on the default screen, and um, as you can see, it's got uh, apps in flash up at the top, and there's none in there at the moment. And um, we can choose all apps, apps in RAM, blah, blah. We'll just do apps in RAM so you can see what's installed already. 
Down at the bottom you can see how much flash storage we've got left and how much uh, RAM storage we've got left. So what we're going to do is just move a couple of things into flash um, and then uh, what we'll see, they can run straight from flash. So here we go. So we'll move Yoda and we'll move Tricorder. It's best not to move things that uh, actually affect the operating system. So Xmaster I wouldn't, for example, want to put into flash. Um, because that runs in the background most of the time. Um, Phonics is very complex, so again, I probably wouldn't do that. But any small uh, applications that you tend to use, just pop them in the flash. Once you've done that, all you do is hit update, and it'll write those to flash. So they've disappeared from my RAM list, and they now appear in flash. There we are. If we head out of the application, and we'll go to all, and if we look for Yoda, he should be there. There he is. Um, but now he's residing in flash, so he's not taking up any internal memory. As you can see, we've gained half a meg overall, which is quite a lot when you only start with two meg. So the second application, Jack Safe. We get a little message as we start just to tell us what it does. And what this does, it installs a flash patch so that if we do a hard reset, we should be able to access any files we've still got in Flash. This can be very useful should you need a particular program. Absolutely, even if your system goes down, you can just reboot it and it'll always be there. If it's stored in the RAM, of course, if it goes down or you have battery loss or do a fatal reset, then you lose everything. Super, so that's fine. And we'll reset the device. Once that's done, we no longer need to keep that file. Um, so that particular program now can be deleted and um, saving a bit more memory in uh, the ROM. So I'm going to move a couple of other things to flash and then we're going to do a hard reset and see what it does. So I've actually moved everything to flash apart from Jack Flash itself because I can't do that. So we'll do a hard reset and see what happens. So to do a hard reset, you need, you need to press the reset pin at the back like so and while you're doing that you need to hold the power button so i'm just going to come out of this before we do because i don't want anything weird happening that's fine so we hit reset press and hold the power button and then remove the paper clip and then it'll reboot and we get the option erase all data yes or no well yes because we're going to do a hard reset here we go I'm not sure why it's beeping at me, but we'll go through the digital setup. We're in, I'm not bothered about where I am or what time it is, we just want to see if it worked. So we can already see benchmark is there. Let's go to unfiled. There we are, so all those programs are still installed. If we pop into Xmaster, we can still run the afterburner hack. These are all currently in flash. So we'll just run the benchmark and see if that's worked because we know we should get a pretty high benchmark if that is working. So it's clearly not working, but that's fine. At least we know we can and can't do that. And if we go back to there, we'll see the other programs that we installed are still there. That's great, as is the Game Boy emulator. I don't know if that will run from flash. Yeah, so it looks like it'll run, but there's no games installed. So yeah, that's how you expand your memory. And that's also how you make sure your memory stays expanded. How much extra memory can we free up on the M500? Jack Flash on the M500 also frees up about half a meg of RAM. So perhaps not as important given that it's got a memory card slot. And on top of that, it's got eight meg of RAM to start with. Let's try overclocking the M500 and see where we end up. So the M500 already has a 33 megahertz CPU. If we run the benchmark, let me just make sure that these are not enabled. That's great. If we run the benchmark, you'll see compared to the 3C, we're running at 126%. This obviously doesn't give us a massive leeway for improvement, but we can get some. So let's just see what it manages on that benchmark if we max it out. And we're going to take benchmark right the way up as high as it'll go, 37. So again, 
it, the limit is 37 mega hertz so unfortunately we can't push it past that but even that should give us some improvement great let's run the benchmark and see how much improvement we've got So it's now reading 143%. So it's substantial improvement, really. So which of these two units is best for playing Game Boy games? So with Afterburner off, we'll have a look at how quickly the Game Boy plays on here. And I've got a save state, actually, just there. So you'll see straight away, it's actually quite a bit smoother, um, even though we've not engaged the Afterburner app. Um, and that's just because it's got a faster processor to start with. What you'll see, though, is that within the Afterburner app, we can still only boost the speed um, to 37 megahertz. This means, theoretically, that the game should play every bit as fast on here as it does on there once we've done the Afterburner for both of them. So let's set the Afterburner up on here and have a look. Sadly, starting the Game Boy emulator resulted in this, which means resetting it completely and starting again. Of course, I do have a backup, and I hope you do too. So, as you can see, I think this is quite smooth. I would say this is very playable. Is it faster than before? Mm, it's hard to say, to be honest. Let's have a look at the two side by side. So with the Afterburner hack on 37 megahertz on both machines, you can see that the M500 is still winning by a margin. Uh, let's launch the Game Boy emulator. I'm just going to see if I can find a better save state. More similar to perhaps where we are on this one. There we are. So that looks basically the same to me. So I think, as you can see, either of these would be suitable for playing Game Boy games on. It might be marginally faster on the M500 or marginally smoother, certainly according to the benchmark test. But I think visibly, they both look very similar to me. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at a couple of bits of software and a bit of overclocking for your Palm 5, see if you can't get the most out of it. These bits of software will work on anything with Palm OS 3 upwards. Um, all the links are down below. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to click subscribe. We managed to reach 50 subscribers last month, so I'm very pleased with that. Thank you for all your support. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you don't miss my next video. If you have any comments or ideas, please feel free to comment below and I'll happily look at them. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.